Good evening. I'd like to welcome you to the uh, City Council meeting, City of San Bruno, February 23rd, 2010. I'd like to thank the San Bruno Garden Club for providing a floral arrangement this evening, and I'd like to ask for roll call, please. Council Member O'Connell. Here. Vice Mayor Medina. Here. Mayor Ruane. Here. Council Member Salazar. Here. And uh, Council Member um, Ibera. <laughs> <laughs> How soon <do> we forget? <laughs> <laughs> Is off this evening with, uh, with notice. And uh, Carol, City Clerk, would you please lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Announcements. We have no announcements this evening. Presentations, no presentations. Review of the agenda. Uh, with the Council's uh, permission, I'd like to uh, move item number 11, which is the report of the Culture and Arts Commission up to right after uh, public hearings. So, uh, approval of the minutes. Any comments, questions, additions, deletions? Seeing none, the minutes will be approved. Uh, consent calendar. All items are considered routine or implemented earlier council action and may be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion unless requested by a council member, citizen, or staff. What's your pleasure? Move to approve. Uh, second, with the understanding that the changes that are before us uh, are also implemented within the uh, classification. Okay, they have been presented some very minor changes to us, yeah. so uh, motion is second to approve with the changes as noted. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Item number eight, public comment. Uh, I'm sorry, public hearings. We don't have a public hearing this evening. We'll move right to item number 11, which is to receive the annual report from the Culture and Arts Commission. Good evening. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of the City Council. My name is Barty Rosmakudra and I will present the report tonight. We appreciate the opportunity to share with you our annual 2009 accomplishments of the Culture and Arts Commission and the plans we are working on for 2010. In 2009, we accepted with deep appreciation a sculpture entitled Break Time that was donated to the city by the Carlton Corners Association. We worked with staff to install it on the library lawn. We also worked with the Park and Recreation Commission on plans for a new recognition sculpture for San Bruno City Park. We received 10 proposals and have narrowed the field down to three finalists. We expect to have models from the finalists by the end of February, and we plan to have a design for the Council's final acceptance by April of 2010. We had another very successful Movies in the Park program. The city saved approximately $8,000 last year by purchasing our own sound equipment and constructing our own screen. The city will save $13,000 this year and subsequent years as well. In addition, the purchased equipment is being used for other events. We also worked with nonprofit groups to help them raise funds by allowing them to sell goodies before and during the movie. We are happy to see the San Bruno Gateway signs being installed on the El Camino Real median. This is a project we have been involved with for the last few years and we look forward to the ribbon cutting. In 2010, our plans include a new program of Shakespeare in the Park. The dates for this program have not been confirmed at this time, but we expect it to be sometime in October. We believe this will be a fun experience for young and old alike. We will continue to work on the recognition sculpture for San Bruno City Park. Once the finalist is selected, we will proceed with the artist contract and the timeline for fabrication. We are completing final plans for our 2010 Movies in the Park program and we'll be publishing the movie list and citizen poll soon. We were pleased to have a lot of input from citizens regarding movie picks. With this help, we feel that we'll have a fun mix of films 
that will once again bring families out every Friday night during the month of September. And yes, cartoons will precede each movie. We look forward to working on any opportunities that may arise during the transit corridor plan, such as gateway signage and finding a new home for the mural. We are also trying to put together what we are calling cheap date movie night, somewhere around Valentine's Day in 2011, where a romantic movie will be played in the rec building. We are still working out details, but we feel it could be a fun getaway night. And we intend to offer the Chamber of Commerce input for an art walk during its farmer's market season this summer, which would be an added attraction to an already popular venue. During the rest of this year, we will continue to work on additional ideas and entertain additional suggestions at each meeting, such as exploring avenues that are even more creative for the citizens of San Bruno to enjoy. You have a copy of the proposed budget in front of you for review, and I would ha be happy to answer any questions you might have. Good. Any questions of uh, Marty? Irene? Thank you. <coughs> I noticed the $68,000 at the top is what you have right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then when you pay for everything, you're going to have 16900 roughly left. Do we have any projections of what revenue you're going to get next year? I know where it comes from, but when we estimate revenue or revenues and um, our own city budget, we kind of put in a, a uh, number for what those estimates are going to be. Do we? It, are we going to get more money for arts? How's that? <laughs> Make it simpler. If if I can help out with that one. Um, I think we're going to be bringing, we're not c bringing this to council for any action this evening. This will come back as an, as an action item in terms of the uh, Public Art Fund and the Culture and Arts Commission's budget um, probably <coughs> next month. At that time, we can give you a better projection of the revenues as well as the expenses. In the meantime, the largest item on here is the recognition sculpture, and we will receive the uh, submittals back. But tonight, it's an information item only. When we do bring you back um, a budget request, we will bring back the revenues as well as the expense request. Okay. I, I really wasn't uh, asking for that reason. I was just concerned that it is a big item. Um, I know we approved the concept of it all, and I would hate to have it eat up all the revenue for the next few years so that you have nothing to work with is really my uh, uh, concern. With that, and again, I realize you're not asking for um, action. But um, uh, I know there are many people in San Bruno who would love to contribute to what this is going to end up being. So I don't know if you've explored any of, of those venues with um, people wanting to contribute. Well, we have a subcommittee that's been in place for some time now, and they are discussing the various options that people will have, okay. uh, whether it's going to be tiered options or or what volunteer versus paid you know they haven't really determined it fully as i understand it i am not on the subcommittee but that is what i understand okay great i i i'm excited about the what's happening I, like i said i just didn't want all the money oops to go into one one pot and have nothing left for later on mm -hmm. well thank you for considering that okay. we have a lot of ideas that we want to explore so right i know mm -hmm. it's very exciting um May I have make one more comment? R Randy, did you have a picture of the new statue? Of the, we have a picture that. of. <coughs> yeah. that. Thank you. Before the uh, projector warmed up. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm bringing it up because I was on the board of the Carlton Corners Association. And unfortunately, be due to many circumstances, we had to disband. And we used the money that we had at our final count to purchase this a statue for the city, and I would just like to recognize the, the Art and Culture Commission for their efforts in, pu in putting, uh, finding a place for it and uh, mounting it, and also to acknowledge the people in the Carlton Corn Association for their efforts and uh, doing it. If you haven't seen the statue up close and personal, it's very charming, and uh, I liked it. So <laughs> that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Any other comments? You guys are doing a great job, and. Uh, I get to be your liaison this year, and uh, it's it's a lot of fun. <laughs> so uh, I look forward to the uh, 
the work you have ahead of you and uh, and thank you very much and please and pass that on to all the commissioners thank you mr. mayor council members thank you Chair. <clears throat> item number nine public comment on items not on the agenda uh, it is the council's policy to refer matters raised in this forum to staff for investigation and or action where appropriate. The Brown Act prohibits the council from discussing or acting upon any matter not agendized pursuant to state law. Anyone in the uh, audience like to address the council? Right, seeing none, item number 10, conduct of business. Item A, adopt a resolution approving strategies addressing the 2009-10 general fund budget deficit. Staff, please. Um, Mr. Mayor, members of the Council, I will briefly summarize uh, the action item that's in front of you tonight um, and have the uh, Administrative Services Director available to answer any questions or to elaborate. Uh, this item follows on a study session that occurred on February 10th and an additional discussion uh, that occurred this evening uh, just prior to this regular City Council meeting. Uh, the action at hand is to address an immediate, to, pri to provide an immediate response to the anticipated $1.3 million revenue shortfall that will affect the current year fiscal 910's uh, general fund operating budget. Uh, as we discussed previously <coughs> with the City Council in late January when we presented the mid-year financial update as of December 31st and at the two subsequent study sessions. The uh, city is projecting a, the uh, shortfall in the magnitude of $1.3 million primarily as a result of lower than anticipated redu already reduced revenue projections uh, primarily in the major revenue categories of sales tax, property tax, and development service fees. Consistent with the City Council's continuing direction and policy, this action is intended to provide, as I said, an immediate response and one which recognizes that it is our obligation to maintain uh, balance between revenues and expenditures. The action before you tonight relies on what is a uh, primary use of one-time revenues in order to balance the immediate shortfall. In total, uh, and I will briefly summarize the actions, um, approximately $150,000 uh, will be reduced out of line items in the general fund budget. Uh, there are additional revenues that were unbudgeted, but which we now <coughs> are able to project in the amount of $175,000, coming primarily from increases in our recreation program revenues uh, in the amount of $100,000. Uh, in total, the 175 plus the 150 represents the um, uh, approximately $325,000 of uh, changes, uh, expenditure reductions and revenue increases. The remainder of the $1.3 million strategy comes, as I mentioned earlier, from one-time resources. Those are as follows. Uh, $300,000 use of development impact fees, $250,000 repayment of a portion of the existing redevelopment agency loan from the general fund equipment reserve, repayment of the uh, portion of the redevelopment loan which came originally directly from the general fund in the amount of $200,000. Uh, $200,700. And lastly, a use of $298,800 directly out of the general fund reserve. Uh, in total, those amounts come to $1.3 million and would it be able to be implemented immediately to address the current year shortfall. In addition to these strategies, 
as staff has previously outlined to the City Council. We are anticipating a continuing deficit and revenue shortfall into fiscal year 10-11. Although we have not yet uh, completed substantial work on development of the fiscal year 10-11 operating budget, uh, we are currently anticipating a deficit in roughly the same amount of $1.3 to $1.5 million and are currently recommending uh, the City Council's direction that we move immediately to further evaluation of structural changes to the City organization and reduction of the number of general fund positions that would be in place and effective for the entire year of fiscal 10-11. Um, we are also recommending that the City Council provide direction for a substantial work effort over the next year to identify and evaluate strategies for new revenues um, and as previously reported to the City Council, we, do, we would not expect uh, any substantial new revenue mechanism uh, that might be considered by the City Council being effective until the following fiscal year, 11-12, uh, but believe as part of a longer term strategy for what is a continuing serious uh, revenue shortfall situation that uh, these variety of strategies be implemented and uh, are asking your approval tonight, uh, your preliminary approval for the strategy moving forward, and your immediate approval for the uh, strategy to address the current year $1.3 million revenue shortfall. Any council discussion? We've had two rather lengthy, exhaustive, and thorough study sessions on uh, this item. Um, it's your pleasure. To the chair? Yes. I heard, I heard the word thorough, so. <laughs> um, I appreciate staff. We had a study session prior to this. Uh, I took the opportunity to meet with the manager and the uh, administrative services director and what, over a couple hours today, <coughs> this afternoon. Uh, and I appreciate the, the data and the information that we have. It was somewhat um, enlightening, but as well as appreciative that the 200000 for the repayment of the redevelopment loan um, was, as explained, did not come out of the reserves. So in essence, that's to me a positive. It also was good for me to see that we've gone from a 3.2 in general reserves to a 6.0. I think it's progress and I think it's positive. Um, I think and believe that in the resolution, or at least if an understanding by the majority of the council, I'd like to see that we start to establish and stipulate some type of a guidelines on use of reserves, whether they be general and or um, the equipment, whether they be in the equipment reserve because maybe staff feels we have been managing it well, we've been having uh, elongating the, the equipment, does it go into capital improvement as discussed earlier. Um, I also feel that I would like to see a timeline uh, was mentioned about a 30 days preliminary coming back to the council uh, as far as the timeline and um, preliminary as far as the restructuring or the vacancies or um, the retire potential retirements, et cetera, from the staffing of the general fund employees. Uh, we talked about 60 days just coming back as far as some beginning of the implementation. Uh, I'd like to see those timelines. I'd also like to see maybe in the second meeting in April, maybe that comes about, the progress of the current budget for 210, 211. I'd like to see how we think the deficit is working. Maybe we'll have some more idea what the state's going to do to us, hopefully not worse than what they already have. Um, I think these are some critical things that we need, I would like and recommend that we have placed within either the resolution or an understanding uh, by action so that we keep on a timeline and we address this issue going straight forward um, and try to resolve the current budget currently and then obviously already embarking upon 2010-2011. Anyone else? Irene? Michael? Uh, go ahead. Irene? Oh. Um, I, I <coughs> understand and I, I agree with you about wanting to see a timeline. I think we need to get that um, going. I, I don't know if we want to put 
anything about using reserves or not, or how to use reserves in this particular? No, um, I don't. Okay. I, I, thought, I thought that's what Coming you, up with a guideline of, uh, down the road. Okay. Uh, that would be great to put it in with the timeline itself so we can kind of figure out for the yes. future budget. Okay. Um, so I, I agree with those things. I do want to commend um, both the city manager and the, and I can never forget, never, never remember what your new title is. Mr. O'Leary, it's easier. <laughs> For all your hard work with this, it's not easy to sit there and uh, try to figure out what's the best thing to do for the city, and it's not easy to, to move, push the numbers around and then realize that they're going to be people's jobs and lives affected. So it's, I admire how you've done it, um, and I appreciate it. So. Uh, if there's nothing else, I, I, I want to, uh, Councilwoman is correct on thanking the staff, and, and it is a challenging time for everybody and, and what they're dealing with, and even at my place I've had to deal with the uncomfortable situation of looking at things like this, and it's not hard. I mean, it's not easy. It's hard looking at folks and trying to analyze and determine what to do. Um, and I also appreciate staff because, un unfortunately, like, unlike the private sector, it becomes very public, and it makes it uneasy and it makes it challenging to try to do what you're supposed to do day to day, knowing that this lingers over the heads of uh, folks in the general fund. So um, I appreciate the work and the service that they continue to do, um, and I think we all need to be sensitive um, as, as we move forward in trying to remedy our budget shortfall. With that, if there's nothing else, I'll go ahead. Uh, just uh, one, one comment. Uh, I also wanted to pass along my thanks. I know you guys have been working really hard on this. and. Uh, I do appreciate all the work you've put into it. Uh, one thing that, um, that's been sort of enlightening to me is that there are even now some things that we aren't budgeting for in terms of ongoing maintenance of some facilities. And um, so I, I would like to see going forward just a, a better understanding of all our possible future liabilities so that we have just a, a really solid understanding of um, what our reserve should look like and uh, just really, you know, the health of, of that fund. Um, because right now I think we're going by some percentage guideline, which uh, it seems like we're in a good position, but yet we are missing a few items. So um, just for my own uh, comfort level, I I'd like to see a little, uh, as, as much as possible, a, a better understanding of, of how that, uh, that fund could be consumed by various emergencies. Action. Uh, I'll introduce the resolution if the rest of my colleagues are comfortable with the coming back in April with some progress on the budget second meeting with the 30-day preliminary 60-day implementation um, with some of those stipulations in there um, uh, and eventual guidelines down the road uh, of that. Clarification, okay. just a suggestion. Uh, why don't we just uh, take action on the resolution and then we'll take a separate little exactly. action or direction to the uh, to staff for the uh, reserve policy and some time limits and stuff. I think I don't want to mix the two up, so. I'm fine with that. Okay. So yeah. to begin the process, I'll go ahead and introduce the resolution for adoption. Vice Mayor Medina. Aye. Council Member Salazar. Aye. Council Member O'Connell. Aye. Mayor Ruane. Aye. Um, and uh, it sounds like the, the City Council would like to instruct staff to bring back a, a written policy, a preliminary at the very beginning of a reserve policy and how we're going to uh, address reserves in the future. What's the best way to do that? And also uh, a timeline for some of your, some of your future intended uh, actions uh, to take place for the, the budget that's going to occur in 2010, 2011. Okay. Through we can do that. summarizes it mm -hmm. in the April, just so we get a preliminary, like you said, of that in addition to the budget situation. All right. Yes. Uh, Irene. I just want to know I'm not going to be here April 23rd. 23rd. Or huh? I'm going. <laughs> I'm, go I'm going to Europe to visit my daughter. Well, so good for you. I know. Think of all the stuff we could get done. <laughs> oh, thanks a lot. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so no, that, that's, that's okay. Uh, I'll leave notes. That's great. No, we should have something before that. Okay. Um, item B, adopt a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a memorandum of understanding with the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission 
and a contract with HDR Engineering, Inc. in an amount not to exceed $40,000 for a design study of the San Francisco County Jail water connection at Sneed Lane. <laughs> Staff report, please. Honorable Mayor, Council Members, the city and county of uh, San Francisco Jail, located on the west side, west side of uh, the city, is provided with drinking water uh, from the Harry Tracy uh, treatment plant pump station. The main uh, water uh, line goes through uh, very sensi environmentally sensitive area. Uh, it's longer than uh, three miles in length. You can see uh, that uh, is shown on that map in red. This uh, water main is a very old uh, portion of the system and PUC had many uh, problems <coughs> with this uh, uh, section of uh, uh, the pipe for the last decade. In those instances, uh, they are asking for uh, the city's help, and in essence, the city provides them with emergency water uh, during uh, those uh, times when this main line is going down. Right now, uh, for uh, the last few days, uh, the, uh, this uh, line is uh, even now damaged and the water provides emergency water to, uh, to uh, PUC. PUC approached the city asking the city if uh, the uh, city would be willing to work out a agreement, uh, possi possibly agreement with them that uh, to connect the jail to our own water system and the proposal is shown in uh, blue color on that map. Uh, in essence, uh, the connection would be a very short connection to the existing system, uh, water system of the city and would use only just uh, the very last portion of the existing main uh, to feed with uh, drinking water uh, the jail. The city, and the city agreed to further uh, assess the feasibility of uh, uh, this approach mm -hmm. and uh, to hire a consultant who could assess the feasibility and the implication of uh, uh, this uh, uh, service connection with the city of uh, San Bruno. PUC agreed uh, to pay for all of the costs uh, associated with uh, uh, this uh, feasibility study at this time and whatever will be uh, the next step, certainly PUC will be responsible for, the, uh, for all costs associated uh, with this project. What is our interest in this uh, discussion and partnership in essence to uh, address our own challenge, helping PUC during this time when they are asking the city to provide those emergen emergency uh, uh, connections. Our department is not sized for that additional demand on our workforce and that really uh, that uh, ongoing uh, support really disrupt our own operation <laughs> and uh, uh, really place a unreasonable demand on our own resources. And that is one of the main reasons why uh, the city agreed uh, to uh, go down and uh, on, the, on this road jointly with PUC and to assess if this is a uh, feasible and uh, possible project. At this time, I am asking uh, uh, your support for uh, authorizing the city manager to finalize and uh, to agree and to enter in that memorandum of understanding with uh, PUC and uh, to hire HDR uh, for uh, the assessment of uh, the feasibility of this project. Any questions of uh, staff? 
Robert Rakoff, 7th Avenue. I kind of have a general question. This is a not to exceed dollar amount. Has, has the city in the past when they've had not to exceed ever saved any money or have we always spent up to the not to exceed amount? In other words, they, they, in this case, might we get a bill for 35000 and uh, they would consider that they did the job or will they probably give us a bill for 40000 and is there any option to, to save with a not to exceed type of contract? Oh, I understand. At this time, uh, the consultant contract, uh, the estimated cost of uh, the consultant contract is less uh, than 40000 uh, but just to uh, add some unforeseen f uh, future need uh, was included in our contract uh, agreement with uh, uh, PUC not to exceed. Uh, based on our agreement with uh, uh, PUC, irregardless of how much uh, the contract, uh, the consultant contract amount would be, uh, PUC will, will uh, be responsible and they will pay for any additional cost. If that additional cost will be necessary based on some, some unforeseen reason <coughs> to any of us at this time. This is a feasibility study, and they have to see if, uh, uh, how this additional demand uh, will impact the overall system management and operation for the whole water system in the city. And this is a very important project, certainly for us to make sure uh, that uh, providing that service connection to PUC will not uh, impact in any negative way any uh, operation, any uh, portion of our uh, system. Any other questions, comments, discussion? Action. I'll introduce the resolution for adoption. Councilmember O'Connell. Aye. Councilmember Salazar. Aye. Vice Mayor Medina. Aye. Mayor Ruane. Aye. Item 10C, adopt a resolution authorizing the purchase of an electric sewage grinder for the Crestwood Sewer Lift Station from JWC Environmental Company in the amount of $62,242.39 and appropriating $12,242.39 from the Wastewater Enterprise Fund to the Crestwood Sewer Pump Station Improvements Project. Clara, you're on again. Maybe. No? Okay. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and Council. I'm presenting electric sewage grinder purchase proposal for the Crestwood Sewer Lift Station. Some current facts. <laughs> <coughs> the Crestwood Sewer Lift Station is located behind 1521 Crestwood Drive, which is between Rollingwood Drive and Fleetwood Drive. This lift station receives a high amount of flow from the greater Rollingwood, Fleetwood, and Oakmont neighborhoods. Due to this large service area, and on average, the station receives more flow than any other station without the electric system. The station's last rehabilitation project was completed in 1993, and a redundancy system with four pumps was installed to ensure a proper, <coughs> excuse me, um, sorry about that, <laughs> technical difficulties. <laughs> station to a point of gravity where sewage then travels under Highway 280 to a large trunk main on Sneath Lane. Due to these facts, the Crestwood Sewer Lift Station is an important and critical junction point of our collection system. The current problem. Through the years, solid objects within the system have made it to the station and have caused damage to the pumps or stopped them from pumping. These occurrences are happening more often due to the deterioration of our collection system and the intermittent introduction of materials from assisted living or convalescent facilities. It is not uncommon for staff to remove submersible pumps from the sewage several times a week and remove materials from the blocked pumps. This process is time consuming Length is the time our crew is directly exposed to raw sewage and defers preventable maintenance 
and other, at other aging stations. Staff spends approximately 250 maintenance hours a year removing objects from, clog, from clogged pumps at this location. Our recommendation, due to the importance and need to keep this critical station operational, the department is propo pro proposing an automatic grinder which will be installed at the station to grind incoming solids in an effort to keep the pumps from being damaged or jammed. This will assure that all incoming solids such as rocks, rags, broken pipe parts, construction materials, and any other material that can be placed into our system will be ground down to an acceptable pumping size. This equipment was budgeted as part of the 0910 Wastewater Enterprise Fund CIP program and the machinery was competitively bid. This includes my presentation and I would like to answer any questions or provide any further detail. So this is like a giant garbage disposal? Uh, yes, basically. <laughs> Okay. Much like a tree chipper has two cones and mm -hmm. things hit it and it's ground down. Does somebody have to turn it on and off? Is it automatic? Automatic. Automatic. Okay. To, to the chair, um, we talked about this. Uh, obviously, it, it jams, uh, causes uh, problems for the current machinery, but that, that this could help ex uh, extend its uh, lifespan, the equipment. This is correct. What, what kind of extend lifespan are we referring to? Basically what happens is, is when solids come down and they, uh, there's clearances uh, in between the impeller and the outside of the pump, and when solids come down, it nicks the uh, material, creates a higher, uh, or a bigger opening, and then the efficiency of the pump then has to work harder, it uses more electricity, um, and then basically it costs more money over time. In a sense of a time frame, we rebuild the pumps about every three years, uh, through talking to other people that have uh, installed these before or in line before a pump station, we could possibly push it up to about five or six years before we actually rebuild the pumps. You did fine, Clark. Um, <laughs> and then I know there's a, as I was informed by staff earlier today, that there's certain items that uh, cause some, some damage that we continuously have up in that area. And my understanding is we also have done some outreach yes, we uh, to try to help educate as well as curtail some of the ongoing uh, problems that we're experiencing? Yes, we have. Okay. Uh, through the chain. Uh, has the, ed obviously the education hasn't been successful. Are we going to try some more? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, um, in the sense of, yeah, it's ongoing. <laughs> is, is there a mechanism? I don't disagree that we should have this. I, I totally agree that we should have this, but it just seems ludicrous to me that people are putting pieces of pipe and rocks and things like that down the sewage system. So is there a way to pinpoint more closely who, where it comes from and who's doing it? And no, huh? It's, it's almost close to impossible to try to track something down within the sewer system from any okay. particular residence that introduces something. Uh, the rocks uh, or, or pieces of pipe are just from old systems. The pipes uh, break apart, dirt that is on the outside of the pipe falls in, flow carries it to the station. Okay. The, the other concern I have long term is obviously that means that the, s the sewer system upline is deteriorating more and more rapidly. Are we looking at how we're going to fix that and what the timeline is for that particular thing? Is the urgency for that accelerated a bit because of this? I think through the upcoming rates, yeah, we were basically prioritizing where we where we need to be able to uh, look at a certain area and see whether or not in a priority does that need to be addressed first versus something else. This station is unique in the sense that it actually receives flow from the Olympic pump station and from a larger port of that Rollingwood and, and um, Oakmont area. Um, you made reference to construction materials. A lot of times when homeowners or plumbers are um, putting in laterals or any other new work, um, it's not uncommon for rebar, uh, pieces of concrete, or mortar to get in the system. It's just part of the business. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Sure. Yes, Michael. Uh, the um, the pump station is it? Um, you said there's a, a five or six year uh, cycle where the, the parts of that pump station are rebuilt. Is is the, um, the overall the pump station? Does it have a, a, a an infinite uh, lifespan, or is there at some point where we really need to look at replacing the entire station? 
Well, what's unique about the, about the Crestwood was that it was actually done in 1993 with still somewhat current construction standards. So what's lucky, or we're lucky in this sense with this station, is that the bay in itself uh, can stay the way it is. And if we, if we take some effort to extend the length of the pumps, it's, um, it's different than maybe some of the other stations where we actually need to uh, re-pour uh, the wet wells, which is a, a huge undertaking. So we're able to uh, be able to do that th at this station in the sense of, of being, you know, um, in the sense of cost, this is, or, or this machine will help us go farther without having to buy larger <coughs> pumps or redo the whole uh, concrete caissons in the ground. Okay. And have you looked at, um, on an ongoing basis, um, the, the lifespan of, of the grinder and the impact that it's going to have? You, you're going to uh, obviously use less resources to go down there and clear jams. Mm -hmm. uh, will that um, help offset the cost of maintenance to the grinder itself and, and p the replacement cost uh, whenever it does need to be replaced or repaired? Yes, part of this contract is actually, um, we almost have a, the, the grinder part itself, not anything, not the motor or the shaft, but we actually have one uh, on the shelf so that we'll be able to put that in. And um, in a sense, that's kind of the sacrificial lamb in this, so that the pumps can actually uh, go longer. Okay, okay. And, and so you, you have looked at um, staff savings, or uh, basically um, staff savings versus uh, uh, we have. maintenance costs. Yes. And it, lo it looks like it's a yes a win-win. Yeah, we're okay. spending a lot of time on on, on pulling on, these on things out, but it's okay. When you, when we're that directly close to sewage, it's always an issue. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any action? I'll go ahead and introduce the resolution for adoption. Vice Mayor Medina. Aye. Council Member Salazar. Aye. Council Member O'Connell. Aye. Mayor Ruane. Aye. Uh, item 10D, adopt a resolution appropriating $180,258 to cover cost increase for professional engineering services for the water pump station number four and numbers four and five upgrade project. Staff report, please. <coughs> Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'm before you tonight to request your uh, consideration of uh, approving a contract amendment to increase the budget for uh, the design of the water pump stations number four and five. Uh, pump station number four, the college pump station, is located at the intersection of College Avenue, College and uh, Skyline. Uh, there's currently a small pump building there uh, on the, uh, the north side of College Avenue. And this project will uh, abandon that pump station and build a new pump station on the south side of College Avenue. So up on the screen is an image of the existing pump station <coughs> and the location where we're proposing to put the new pump station. Um, back in 2000. Uh, six, we approved a design contract to design two pump stations, the Maple Pump Station, which is number five, and College Pump Station, which is number four. At that time, we uh, expected that we'd be able to have the um, efficiency of designing two pump stations at the same time. The difficulty arose when uh, we tried to site the College Pump Station. It happens to be in um, adjacent to Caltrans right-of-way. And that process to work with them to get to agreement on a site for the new pump station really delayed that design project. We made the decision to move forward with Maple, but that meant decoupling the projects. And as a result of that, we're going, we're going to ultimately incur a larger design cost. We get to use some of the design effort that we invested in Maple, but now we're designing two years down the road and we have other issues we have to um, uh, invest in the design for college and as a result the consultant effort is going to be greater. Staff has sat down with the consultant and uh, really tried to negotiate um, the best value additional scope that we could come up with and the best proposal that we came up with is a hundred and eighty thousand dollar increase. So that would increase the total design cost to 705000 for both projects. Uh, this project 
the design costs, this additional design cost was anticipated and included in the 0910 capital budget for design. And of course, all the design costs and construction costs for the water pump stations come from the water enterprise fund. Um, and so with that completes my presentation, but I'd be happy to answer questions and staff's recommendation is to move forward to approve the amendment. Questions of staff? Action. I'll introduce the resolution. Good luck. Council Member O'Connell. Aye. Council Member <coughs> Salazar. Aye. Vice Mayor Medina. Aye. Mayor Ruin. Aye. Item number 11, we already uh, received the report from the Culture and Arts Commission. Item 12, comments from Council Members? Through the Chair. Uh, thank you. Um, an email was sent in regards to outreach uh, as the census obviously is upon us and trying to ensure that we get counted uh, and that we outreach to all segments of our community uh, which are diverse and I wondered if um, the staff has thought of any opportunities that we could utilize with our uh, cable TV also having it uh, announced here on cable announcement on channel one um, just because I think the importance of all of us being counted uh, and to try to reassure some folks too of that there's not some hidden motive and there's not some type of uh, punishment or penalty for uh, standing up and being counted, which is important, which affects our community uh, in a lot of ways. And um, obviously I just think it's uh, between now and the deadline, I think it's important for us to continue uh, to at all levels of all meetings that are televised and others that these mes this message gets out. Great. Any other comments? Uh, uh, oh, Mayor Ruin, if I could just make a, a quick comment, um, I would direct, direct uh, the City Council and uh, the residents of San Bruno's attention to the uh, in the mail copy of the most recent uh, Focus newsletter. Uh, that newsletter inc includes a uh, half page article about the census complete count efforts. Uh, we are continuing to pursue the council's direction to uh, use any available methods of advertising and alerting and informing the city council about the importance to, I'm sorry, informing the public about the importance to San Bruno of the um, uh, complete count uh, being adequately conducted in our community. Uh, we are also providing room space for the Census Organizing Committee to provide one-on-one -on -one, uh, education and assistance to individuals who might need uh, help in filling out the forms or understanding the uh, various questions and the importance of those uh, detailed questions that are part of the census effort. So I appreciate uh, Council Member Medina's um, advisory to the public and we will continue to uh, do everything that we can to outreach into the community in coordination with the Complete Count Committee. Good. Anything else? All right. Uh, item number 13, we do have a closed session. We have three items on the closed session. Uh, item number A is a uh, closed session for purpose of consulting with legal counsel regarding the matter of the City of San Bruno complaint number R2. 2010-0004 for administrative civil liability filed before California Regional Water Quality Control Board, San Francisco Bay Region, February 16, 2010, California Government Code S54956.9A. Okay. And item B is a closed session to consult with legal counsel regarding potential litigation, California Government Code S54969569.9B1. 9596956.9B1. And item C is a closed session for the purpose of conferring with legal counsel regarding pending litigation in FCC program access complaint, Wave Division Holdings LLC et al. versus Comcast Corporation et al. File number CSR 8257-P, California Government Code S54956.9A. And I don't believe there's any reportable, uh, th there's nothing reportable uh, to bring the counsel back this evening. Uh, having said that, this meeting will uh, adjourn until the next City Council meeting on March 9th, right here. <laughs>